Hi, everyone. I'm Shelley Lowell, and this is my painting, Regression. And I just first want to thank uh, the Richfield Guild for giving me the opportunity to talk about my work and for the opportunity of the walk and talk and for being here. Thank you. Um, it all started out back in the 70s, actually, if you really want to know the truth. I, um, I studied advertising design and visual communications at Pratt, and visual communications was the key. So I really learned how to communicate visually and also verbally, but mostly visually. And in 1972, I painted my first painting, which what happened is, is this, these images started coming into my head, and I felt the urge to paint them. Even though I didn't study painting in art school, I did have a smattering of painting classes, but they really, uh, I really didn't feel like I was a painter. And so I, the, the first image came to me in 1970, and it took me two years to paint that painting, because I really didn't think that I had the ability to paint. And, and I really had to work through and remember everything I did before I went to art school to paint that painting. And then the painting started coming, the sculptures came, and that work, unbeknownst to me, became part of the feminist art movement of the 1970s, and that work is actually on the Elizabeth A. Sackler um, feminist art base on the Brooklyn Museum website. So that was in the 70s. And now we, so I, all these images were coming to me, and then I was done with those images, and nothing was happening, and I lost my voice. And so between 1974 and 1996, I maintained my, pa my painting and drawing, but of people and things, and I wasn't really, didn't feel like I had anything monumental to say. I moved to Asheville, North Carolina in 96, and opened an art gallery and met all these wonderful artists, and got connected spiritually, and, and the images that started coming to me were messages that were spiritual messages, and I began painting them, which seemed to the average person to be an abstract painting, but it really was spiritual messages. That evolved, okay, to, um, I'm not sure exactly when and where, but, but what happened is, in, I also was writing poetry back in the 70s as well. Um, in, in, nine, in 2001, I wrote a poem, which I, I really didn't write this poem. This poem came through me when I was sitting at the computer. And, and um, it was the first time that I used nature as a metaphor for humanity. And, um, and that was the first seed for this work, which this is part of work that's been going on from 2004. Okay, so that was the first seed. And the second seed was that in 2003, I was painting my last painting for a show in Columbia, Maryland. And as I was painting that painting, and this is the painting that I was painting, okay, which was strictly out of my head, um, which a lot of artists, as you know, say that. Okay, and what happened in this painting was it was almost done. It was the last painting for the show. I, it was a solo show. I was like wanting to get this painting done, and I proceeded to paint this area here. And what happened when I was painting that area up there, because everything was done except the green area, is I started painting, and my hand just continued painting all by itself. I was not painting this painting, this, this green area. I knew something was happening to me, and a little voice in my head said, Shelley, this is a very weird looking tree. <laughs> and, you know, I thought, this is not supposed to be a tree. This is supposed to be a river. These are branches of the river. And then the voice said, but it's okay. You can draw that tree. You can paint that tree. Well, you know, I knew something absolutely amazing happened to me at that moment. But I was so engrossed in getting that show together, delivering the artwork, hanging the artwork, because it was, it was Columbia Art Center was very similar to this, where you hung your own work when it was a solo show, that this slipped my mind totally. And so, but I kept hearing, you've got to paint trees. So I started painting trees, and they were much more traditional looking trees. They looked like regular trees with no leaves, except they had um, bursts of color around them as if they were energy around that tree. And, I, and so then I get connected to an, a gallery director in Baltimore, Maryland, and he wants to see everything that I did from the time I was a child. He comes to my home, and my studio is in my home, and I took all my work out, and he's looking at all my stuff, everything. And he looks at this painting, and he said, you know, and I didn't tell him anything about this painting. 
He said, you know, I really think there's something here in the top portion of this painting. And I think you ought to paint a painting of that. And then when he said that, it was like, oh my God, yes, of course, of course. Of course. And so I got a canvas the same size as this, and I proceeded, you can't just copy. <laughs> you can't just copy this. It was the wrong proportions. It wasn't working. I was frustrated because I was floundering around. So we talked about it. He said, well, why don't you do another painting? Just put that down and leave it. So I did another painting, and it flew out of me. It literally flew out of me. And so that began to be the series that I am still working on today. Um, and the interesting thing about this work and my early work, which if you look at, you will see nothing resembles each other at all, except that the early work was channeled. The early work had messages for humanity, but it was much more about human relationships than about um, you know, what, what am I doing now? And, um, and so there were messages. And this work that I've been doing since 2004 has messages for humanity, and each painting has a poem. And what happened is when I was working with this director, he said, I, I did 18 paintings, and he said, now I want you to do a painting for the poem that you wrote in 2001. And that was really hard because, because I had to really work finding this image, because the image has come to me. I don't make these images. So it really took a lot to do that painting. And then I had 19 paintings, and he said, now I want you to write a poem, because he knew that I wrote that poem in 2001, for each one of your paintings. And he said, and this is going to take you a long time. <laughs> and I said, no, it's not. And so what I did with each painting is I, I visualized the painting in my head, and I meditated on the painting, and I asked it what its story was. And each painting, it was writing started coming through, and I'd write it down, and then I'd read it out loud, because it didn't make any sense to me when I was writing it, because I wasn't writing it. And, and then I'd read it, and then I'd massage it, and it became the painting's poem, and the story for that painting. So, so each, all, these, all these works in context, are really about a, a wake-up call for humanity. In, in each, each one of them has a way of, of being a little zing to humanity to wake them up, to help them understand that our job here is to love this planet and love each other. And that's what my work is really all about. And so I want to share the poem with you for this painting. But before I share the poem, I don't want to taint your... Um, your uh, vision of what this is, because everybody, I think, is everybody's interpretation of, of a painting is valid. And so I really would like to open it up to ask you, anyone here who would like to share what you think this painting is about before I read that poem. Does anybody want to volunteer your thoughts? Yes, sir. I'm just thinking that, that we are going to have to learn how to live in other ways on this planet, as your fish have to learn to... <laughs> live outside of the water. Okay, wow. The dolphins. Okay. Yes? I do want to say that when this show is going up, I particularly liked your painting because I, 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 the message to me is so sort of a streaming. I just get the streaming on a light and a lovely feeling. But I was very interested in, to hear you talk about it because I wanted to know what, you, what, it, what the meaning was. So it's interesting. So that's interesting. Okay. It's very dreamlike. Uh, and, and the imagery of water and moon is uh, the unconscious and mystery and uh, universal. Um, and, the, and the implied movement is magic. Uh, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, I will read the poem. Oh, by the way, I, I have this locked off. This is, this is the painting of, of that area, the, the bottom painting over here. Oh, sorry. So that's the painting from this area right here. Okay, so the poem. The poem is called Regression, same as the painting. One day, fish will fly, not in our lifetime, but someday. Earth beings will evolve to extinction induced by corporate greed, gene manipulation, 
poisoned food, toxic vaccines, chemtrails. But nature is resilient. Life will begin again in a new way with renewed hope. We will see it from the other side and rejoice. Our souls once again will inherit Earth, will inhabit Earth in another form. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to see if I can answer them. <laughs> you know, when you talked about the river becoming a tree, there are aerial photographs of the Mississippi and other water tributaries that are bare trees. And the, and the redundancy in nature yes. is part of what we are experiencing over and over. The, the Fibonacci code that uh -huh. tells us about how curves are made in nature and in man. Yes, yes. So it, it's uh, the tree is the river, and the river is the mm -hmm. tree. Yes. And the thing is, so sometimes I look at this painting, I go, oh, maybe it's really an upheaval. Maybe it's not coming from the sky. Maybe it really is coming from below. Maybe there's two messages in this painting. You know, maybe there's more messages in here that I didn't know when I was painting this painting. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yes. I'm curious, when you submit a painting, how do you decide which one in a juried show is going to be the one? And do you send any narrative with it that explains it or that would help the jury decide or the juror? Well, I don't send any narrative with it, but uh, the selection here was based on, t on a year because we had a limited, no, we can only do last three year, any paintings from the last three years. So I was limited in terms of what, of what I felt was quality that, that I wanted to share for those three years. So I did submit three different paintings, and this was the one that got into the show. I think I understand what you said when you started painting, and you had to forget everything you learned in the painting class and go back to when you were a child. I think I understand that, but would you like to share what that meant for you? Well, you know, the thing is that I, I painted as a child and I didn't think about it, I just did it. And when I was in art school, uh, painting wasn't the highest thing on our list because we were busy studying how to do advertising, how to do graphic design, how to do photography. It was like one of the disciplines we had to study, we had to do. And I don't think my teachers were really that terrific either because one of them, and this was during the 70s, so you can imagine was teaching us how to smoke bananas instead of how to paint. So I really, <laughs> I, I really didn't get a lot out of my painting class and I was really intimidated as well. And so when I finally decided to paint, I really had to look inside myself right. to paint. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you thank very you. much, Shelley.